Hey guys, Joe Tech here again, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up Adobe Digital Surround Sound for your computer. We'll be right back. This is the optical cable that we'll, we'll be using for this installation. Um, there's no electrical connection, it's just light. And light travels through this cable into my receiver, which is a 7.1 receiver. Um, this happens to be just a, just a regular optical cable, nothing fancy. And it works very, very well. And I'm going to show you how to connect that to your sound card and how to configure it. Now, my receiver here is a Pioneer VSX-816. It's a rather old receiver. And, uh, however, it does Dolby Digital Surround and Do Dolby Digital Live. And DTS is what we're really interested in. And, uh, and so this, this receiver can actually decode that. Now, a lot of people don't realize that they're getting a, if they buy a 7.1 uh, sound card... They don't realize that the 7.1 is mainly analog. You have all these separate analog connections out. You have to connect each individual speaker to each individual connection. Unless you have hardware. You ever notice in the back of a sound card? You ever notice in the back of a computer? Like this one here. This has optical out. You have um, speakers out. You have either your line in or a microphone in and a bunch of other, all these different connections. Some of them have, some of these are like left, right. I mean, they also, they, they, they double duty as other connections, you know, as uh, different outputs. And this is a sound card below here, which is very similar to the built-in sound card that happens to be a Soundbuster Lab. This is an older, much older machine because it has LPT on it, but I'm just giving, using this as an example. Now... This optical out most likely is just, you know, two speakers, and it's it just it's not a analog connection such as these. So we're going to show you how to do that. As you can see, this is the Sound Blaster Z rear connections. As you can also see, there are many other connections on the Sound Blast Z in analog rather. You have microphone, speaker out, uh, line in, bunch of stuff. However, I don't use I don't use anything in the analog area. On the far left, you'll see is optical out and optical in. Optical out is the gray, and the optical in is the black. Like if I needed to um, to record anything with optical in, like a mini disc, back in the day, I would use that to re do recording versus analog in, like line in, whatever from an analog source when dealing with in, an optical because I'm, I'm 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 very into when I play games I like to be playing my games in Dolby Digital Live and back back long time ago Sound Blaster never did that and uh, I had to buy an HD Claro for my Dolby Digital Live experience it's a big difference uh, when you have uh, that so the optical cable simply just plugs right into that and connects to the uh, sound card um, via this connection and it goes directly to my receiver optical in. This is straight through. The receiver does all of the coding which uh, changes the audio that's coming from the sound card to the receiver. Alright, the connection you see, I'm in very tight quarters because my receiver is um, in pretty tight area but these are the two optical ends on my receiver one is for my Xbox 360 and the other is for my computer so I have two optical ends on this receiver let me see if I can spin around and show you a different angle I have uh, seven dot my speakers are connected below and they're labeled because I have in wall speakers so all these connections get, I'll show you below. <laughs> um, and then I have optical in on the far right there. Just all the cables here, I apologize. I just want you to take a look 
if you could see those are the two optical ends over there on the far right um, my receiver is in a tight area it's like in the corner so I can barely get get to anything here um, so that's that's the optical end and, and I believe it or not having it on having it on Xbox 360 I mean it is an older machine but optical out it still does Dolby Digital and it sounds great when you're in the room now I'll show you real quick um, there's one speaker here that's my right channel um, since I have six monitors here you really can't see the other speaker but it's behind it there's my center and then you come over here we have the other channel these are all in walls and then over there I have another one and then over here I have another one so I have seven and you can't see the other well the other ones back there you see that one right there um, and then the other one is actually behind the curtain but there's seven seven speakers in the wall and they're made by audio source um, and then I have two subwoofers which are down here I have an 8 inch and a 10 inch and this room rocks um, I do want to show you something that you'll definitely get a kick out of um, because I'm really into sound especially when you're playing a game on a PC you want to get the most experience possible so having this type of setup is a little radical, but it works really well. I'm just going to show you how it's connected to the subwoofer. Now, since all my speakers are all in walls, I did this wiring myself. So I have um, all, my, all my connections are in the wall. So from my receiver, it goes in the wall and then comes through and then comes into this jack here. And then this is my sub out. Now, sub out doesn't have a left and a right. It's just one channel. So this converts to two channels because subwoofers have a left and a right, believe it or not. I don't understand why, <laughs> but maybe because uh, maybe they have dual voice coils sometimes and they have, you know, want to be able to power left and right at the same time. But this is my um, sub out. And obviously, since I planned this whole room out prior to this, so um, that's why this network cables here, my sub, I got my phone lines are here. So power. And then it gets connected to the two subwoofers, which are here. There's one here. There's another one there. This is the primary. This is the primary sub. And this, from this sub, it, it branches off and goes to the 8-inch. Okay, now, this is the front of my receiver. As you can clearly see, it says TV satellite. Now, I have settings here. I got office, I mean off. I have settings of Xbox 360, PC, music PC. So I have different connections coming into this one receiver. I'm never using um, audio on more than one computer at the same time. So I have um, the music PC is actually down here. and, um, and But it actually does my web development. So it doesn't really matter. So anyway, so this, this receiver shows this on the screen. Now, when, once I power on my computer... Okay, now, now the computer's powered on. Watch the display change. And I'm going to show you in the software how to configure this. And I'm going to have two cameras on at the same time and watch how the information on the screen correlates to the information on the receiver. There we go. Look at that. Dolby Digital. That's what Dolby D extended. So now we have... Now we're in Dolby Digital from the sound card, Sound Blaster Z, and, and, and above, or any sound card for that matter that, that offers Dolby Digital Live. So now I'm going to show you in, um, in the software, and we're also going to record this screen at the same time um, when I'm switching around the settings and how you know that you got it right on your receiver. If your receiver can de de uh, decode Dolby information. interesting okay now uh, how we're going to show you how this works is that inside 
we need to go into the driver, into the Sound Blaster driver. And in Windows 10, it's or even Windows 7, it's running here. So we just go to the lower right-hand corner by the clock, and we select SB. And this pops up. Now we have multiple multitude of options here, as you can see. But the only one that we're truly interested in Tr truly interested in is the cinematic now if you look closely on um, on the other monitor or on the other screen or other the other video that I have a uh, picture in picture if you look at the picture in picture video watch how I mean you probably will hear the receiver click as well because it changes now this is where we do the changes so if I click on no to no encoder that means the receiver is doing the encoding now it should say something different on the screen. Since coming from the optical out, now if you look down here, this is important. The audio device SPF, SPDIF, which, was Sony, which stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface Out. Can you believe it? Sony and Philips invented this technology, so that's why it's called SPDIF. It's Sony Philips Digital Interface Out. Sound Blaster Z will be used exclusively for Dolby Digital Live and DTS Connect playback. This is one of the other options that I had was DTS Connect, which which the HD Claro had, and so and Sound Blaster did does did not at the time do this. This is one of the reasons why I went back because they make an awesome sound card, and all the processing is done on the sound card. So this means that no no other software such as Media player applications and games can play directly to the audio device. To enjoy Dolby Digital Live and DTS Connect, ensure that you select Speaker Sound Blaster Z as a default playback device in the Windows Sound Control Panel and, if applicable, in the settings of your application and games. Now, obviously, I have that set. I'll show you. Actually, there it is. Speakers Sound Blaster Z comes up right here, as you can clearly see, but we'll go into the... Into the um, playback devices anyway and there it is speakers sound blaster z as my default and there's a plethora of other options here but we're not using them and we're not doing sp spdif out interesting right you would think that this would be the default but it is not so now if we switch back to adobe digital live you'll see the screen on the receiver change Now I'm going to switch to DTS Connect, which is also very cool. Now watch the screen on that. It's exactly what it says here. Neo PC. And you see Neo on the display. So this receiver can do all of that. We can even check this off and go a little bit more elaborate and change the frequency response and so on and so forth. If we needed to do that in music mode, blah, 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 we could do all this. But nothing else changes on the screen in terms of that. So it doesn't really matter. So these are the three options. So if I didn't have an encoder, you wouldn't hear anything. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play my, my, my theme song, which will probably be better for this demonstration instead of using somebody else's music. So right now, music is playing at the moment. But you don't hear anything because nothing is on. So we'll turn it on. And then we'll switch to this. Not much of a difference between the two. It's more of what speakers are turned on and which speakers are not turned on. All right, so as you can clearly see, so this is, if you want Dolby Digital Live or Dolby Digital Surround, this is what you need to do in order to enable it. Because by default, this is turned off and you're going to freak out going, why isn't my audio working? <laughs> so you need to make sure that you get a receiver that can decode Dolby Digital. And if the device can handle it, then you're good as golden. You know, you're, you're, you're awesome. So I'm a big fan of having surround sound in my office when I'm playing a game because it sounds like the stuff is coming behind me and it's just unbelievable how the surround sound happens. It's just, it's just completely awesome. Uh, it, you can't really explain it 
unless you're physically, um, if you're physically in my office. Maybe one day, you never know, you may, you may come here, and I don't have a problem with that. If you live local, you're more than welcome to stop by and take a look and listen and check out the, the, the setup. Um, I, I do want to show you other things as well, um, but uh, this is pretty much it. This ends the Adobe Digital Surround Setup Installation Guide, per se. If you like this video, please thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And uh, you guys have a great day, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.